Hi everyone. What I'm going to share with you today are two batches of soap that I made um, last night. Um, the first one was a new batch of monkey farts. And that's this here. And the second one is a new one. I don't have a name for it yet. I think I'm going to use this one to replace my um, milk and sweet nectar. This smells so, 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 so good. And it actually seized on me while I was making it. It was really crazy. But um, I'm curious to see how it's going to look inside. Because initially I was going to do the colors. You know, I, I kind of play it safe when it comes to colors. And um, I was going to do like peach and um, orange and a little bit of red. And at the last second I changed my mind and decided to throw a little green in there. Because, you know, like the mango skin has a little bit of green in it. So... We'll see how this turns out. I'm really, really nervous about how this is going to look inside, but it just smells so good. So um, I'll get these set up and I'll get the camera set up and go ahead and slice these. Okay, so here's the first batch here. And I'll cut the first slice. I'm really nervous about what's inside. Um, yeah, this totally sees. I was pouring it um, to do the colors, and um, oh, okay, not bad. And I got to the third color, which is the color on the top, and it literally stopped pouring right as it was pouring. It just froze, like it just stopped pouring. So I had to like pour it in the mold, and bang, 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 and pour some more, and bang, just to do the layers and stuff. So. Um, turned out okay. And I was really nervous about the colors too, but that worked out too. I know that center line looks like it's black, but it's not. It's um, it's like a green. But it was very, very pretty um, before I added the soap to it. It was a very pretty color. Yeah, you can see where it sees. It has the little holes there. But, um, I would say not bad for a batch of seeds to soak. This accelerated so fast. And normally I soak at cool temperatures. And um, I soak warm. And normally I try to, you know, get it in at a, a light to medium trace. And this was already a medium to heavy trace once I added the oil. So, yeah. But I uh, did a small batch to... Uh, to try it out. And um, these will be available on both SC and um, Artfire in four weeks. And I know um, before I had done it on one of my videos, I had said that if anyone wanted to reserve soaps ahead of time, that they could. But um, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to take that back. Um, man, I totally shot myself in the foot when I made that offer because, like for example, my, my geisha, the last batch of geisha that I did, um, it completely sold out really before I ever had a chance to put it in the shop. And so I needed to make more. But um, I didn't have the money to buy the oils and stuff to make more because although the soap was sold out, I still hadn't made any money off of it yet because, you know, they were just reserved. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to take that back. But the good thing about Art Fire is that, you know, once the soap is available, I can list on there that I have, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bars available so that, you know, the whole fear of it selling out before you get a chance to get one, you know, you really won't have to worry about that because you'll have the option of buying as many bars as you want. I'm sorry for the noise and the banging and stuff. It's um really windy here in North Carolina. We've been having like a lot of storms. We actually had like a tornado and stuff um, last week. It wasn't actually here where we are, but not far away, like 20 minutes away in Farmville. They actually had a tornado touchdown. So we've been having a lot of storms. Very, very windy and humid and oh my goodness my bubble bars and my bath bombs are taking a major hit with all of this humidity. 
I'm going to have to um, try to do the bath bombs using less witch hazel. Usually I put about five sprays in it. I don't know. I'm going to use a lot less because they're sticking to the molds and my bubble bars, you know, I had to switch those up so I don't do them in the mold anymore. I've been making them. Let me show you something. I'll show you in a second. I really like this scent, so I'm going to be buying more. I'll be making a larger batch of this next time. I really, I it goes to thunder. I really, really like this fragrance. I'm going to show you what I mean, though, about the bath bombs and the bubble bars real quick. All right, try to zoom in on this real quick. Okay, so for example, here's one of my bath bombs, and I don't know if you can really tell. I don't know if I can adjust the lighting, but the surface isn't smooth. It's like um, bubbly, and then there's like a slight crack in the bottom. And I think what's going on is because of all of the humidity when I make them. They're not like drying right away, they're just absorbing more and more moisture and um, getting like this bubbly surface on it and then they're expanding and getting stuck inside of my molds. And then with the um, bubble bars, normally I make them like in molds like this. Well, this is how I first started doing them, were in these molds. Let me zoom out. So um, I started making my bubble bars in molds like these. And um, what's going on now is because of the humidity, it's taking a lot longer for them to set up. Or when they do set up and I try to unmold them, they get stuck and break apart. Now I think these will be okay. One, because the mold doesn't have a whole lot of intricate, you know, points and stuff. And because they're, they're not as deep. The yummy, yummy bubble bar is a little shallow. So they're not as deep as some of the other ones, so they're a little bit easier to pop out. But like for my rock star and stuff, they were getting stuck inside of the star molds. So you'll see me using a design similar to this on um, most of my new bubble bars. Just because it's easier, I can just roll it up, you know, do my swirl in it, slice them, and just let them sit. And another thing I noticed, I guess because of the glycerin that's used to make them, they're, um, even once they're firm, they have like a slight, this one's not that bad, but the last batch of um, Rockstar that I did um, had like this just ill texture to it. So I had to go behind and um, put cornstarch on the surface of all of them to try to dry them out some. But yeah, that's what's going on with the bubble bars and bath bombs. So I'm, I think I'm going to try to tweak the recipe on how much liquid I use in the bath bombs and see if I can eliminate some of the moisture and hopefully I'll get this together because this is, this is driving me crazy. So um, yeah, also what I'm going to start doing in every video, I'm going to, in the bottom, in the description box, I'm going to put a list of uh, resources and pretty much it'll be like the companies that I use the most. Like I think most people know my favorite is Brambleberry. I pretty much use them for everything. That's just my absolute favorite um, company to use. I'm going to start slicing the monkey farts too, by the way. But um, Brambleberry is just my absolute favorite company to use for pretty much everything. It's like my one-stop shop. I may use other companies too, but that's mainly where I go. Even for like my slab molds and stuff. So I'm going to put a uh, link to those in the bottom just to help other people out because I get a lot of questions and I really do feel bad because sometimes I can't, I don't get back to everyone to answer. Sometimes I'll see a comment and I'll be like, okay, I can't answer it right now and then I'll forget like which video the comment was on. So sometimes I'll find them again and respond and other times I just, I forget or I can't find them. So, um, as far as questions about where I get my oils and the molds and stuff like that, um, I'm just going to put the links below. And there's also a, um, a website, teachsoap.com. I used to use that a lot when I first started um, learning how to make soap. 
And I think these type of resources, man, they'll help you out a, a lot better than I could. Oh, keep it quiet, Ian. They'll help you out a lot better than I could. So, um, yeah, Teach Soap. It's also uh, done by Brambleberry. I think it's, it's a part of it. But um, you get like recipes on there for soaps and um, bath bombs. I mean, like everything is on there. So many different recipes and things and tips. Also, another one is Wholesale Supplies Plus. That's another good one. I use them for a lot of my containers and things like that. And they they actually have a. Um, I think if you look at each product, it'll have like a facts, frequently asked uh, questions. Or whatever, or recipes, and it'll tell you like how to use, you know, the different ingredients and stuff like that. But these are the places where I pretty much get all of my ingredients and supplies and stuff. So I'll put the links below for everyone so you can take a look at those. And also, um, I've been having, I've gotten some questions about like how I do my swirls and stuff. Um, I didn't actually learn them anywhere. I, um, what I did was, I would look at pictures and stuff of other soap, and, you know, pretty much, it would kind of give me an idea of what was possible, like, what could be done with soap, and then what I would do is I would draw a picture. I would actually draw a bar of soap, and I would draw in the swirls and the colors and stuff that I wanted, and then I would just study it, like, just keep staring at it, and just trying to figure out, like, how I could achieve this look. What could I do to achieve this look? And, you know, I would do a batch of soap. And I, when I first started, I, I batched, I just batched, like, in really small. I didn't do them this large. I would do, like, even smaller than this. And um, I would practice the swirls and stuff. And if I liked how it turned out, I would take notes. It's dark green. But anyway, I would take really good notes of what I liked, what I didn't like, what worked this time, what didn't work that time, so that, um, so that, um, I would know what I would want to try for the next time. And that's pretty much how I learned to do swirls. I didn't know about YouTube and all that when I first started soaping. So, um, I didn't really get to ask a lot of questions and stuff. I just had to figure out a lot of stuff on my own. And another good place to go, I didn't really go there to ask questions. By the time I was going to the, this forum, I was already, you know, pretty much well on my way. But it's still a good place to go. Um, the soap making forum, I'll put a link to that below as well. But um, it's people there that pretty much, they just spend their time and they're answering questions. And sometimes even if you read other people's questions, you'll find an answer to a question that you may have had. So that's another good place to go to, um, to get some help. And I promise you that as you, you know, as you go through this journey and start, um, you know, accomplishing things or whatever and hit your different milestones, you're gonna it's just gonna make you a better soaper. It really will. And you'll feel so so accomplished and so much more confident in trying new things. Um, finding out some things, you know, from trial and error as opposed to um, you know, just having me tell you, you know, my experiences or how I did it. So it's a little thin. This is the one bar. Well, that's not the one. Every time I do this batch, it comes out just a little bit different than the time before. I mean, it's mostly the same, so I'm happy about that. I can recycle my pictures. I don't have to take new pictures every time I make this batch. 
Not as far as just a little bit different each time. But it's cool. I like it. So I'm going to try to get two more batches of silk done today. I don't know if I have enough um, oils and stuff, but I'll try. My shop is just really pathetic. Both shops just look really pathetic right now. My shelves are sad. I promise some of you uh, soap buyers probably have more sh soap on your shelves right now than I do. So it's really time for me to restock and replenish. I think I have just one more um, reserved order, order that I need to get out and then I have to get cracking on the other orders. before these will be available in four to six weeks. I can't take reserved orders on them anymore. Um, I think I explained it why. But. So please don't be mad at me guys, but um, I promise when they are ready I'll list all of them between the two shops. So if you go to Etsy and you only see one or you see that it's already like sold out and I haven't relisted it yet, just hop right on over to Artfire. You don't have to have an Artfire um, account to shop there. So actually I do have some customers that still do both because um, I may have some things in Artfire that aren't, you know, still on Etsy. So, you know, if you don't see it, just hop over to Artfire and I'll have multiple quantities listed there. So pretty much what you see listed in Artfire, that's what I have. Like I'm not holding back any soaps or, you know, hiding any out or anything that what's there is, is what I have. So, um, Thanks for watching, everybody, and um, do you have some more soap to show? I will update you. All right, have a great day.